The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Welcome back, everybody, to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham. Glad you could join us for the second of our two hours this afternoon. It's time for Stars and Strikes Doubles. I'm Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy. And uh, as we just finished on our original show at noon, we have a brand new series, four weeks and ten new bowlers set to go. And uh, I'm ready. I guess you're ready, and the bowlers are ready. We've got three veterans and one rookie here on the show, and should be an interesting matchup. All right, let's meet our two teams. First of all, our fifth-seeded team from Merrimack, Massachusetts, Bob Buxton, and his partner from Londonderry, New Hampshire, Brian McKinley. Okay, and uh, Bob comes in averaging 125, his roll-off score 655, and uh, Brian's roll-off score is also uh, pretty close, 650, and we'll explain how they were paired up as a team later on. In fact, the roll-off scores uh, top to bottom in this series were pretty close. Uh, some good roll-off scores uh, and also very close roll-off scores uh, resulting in these pairings, and as Jan mentioned, we will explain that a little bit later. Our fourth-seeded team to oppose Bob and Brian from Concord, New Hampshire, Dennis Prusia, and from Goffstown, New Hampshire, John Mafio. John who? <laughs> He's like John here every week with us. And uh, Dennis comes in averaging 121. And his first appearance on the show, roll-off score 669. John Mafia, 125 average and 647. And, of course, obviously the winner of this uh, championship series, three weeks from now, will move into our Stars and Strikes doubles tournament of champions coming up in the spring. So that's something to think about as we move on in the weeks ahead. But we've got three strings of Scotch doubles men's format here coming up on Stars and Strikes doubles. So don't go away. We'll be right back to start the match. Well, let's give you a look ahead and see what's coming up on this series here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. As we mentioned, Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley against Dennis Prusha and John Mafio today. The winning team today will move on and face the team of Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien next week. In two weeks, Mike O'Brien and Ron Root will be here. And then uh, in three weeks to try and defend that number one spot, a veteran of Stars and Strikes, Dan Broder, will be here with a new partner, a newcomer to the program, Peter Pereira. So... Lots of outstanding doubles bowling coming up in the weeks ahead, and Brian McKinley is ready to get us started here on lane 32 as we begin our first of another four-week series. And Brian looking very smooth on that first ball. Boy, you know, right as he released that, Dan, I thought, boy, that looked like a very good ball, and it was right in the pocket. One-two pocket, and there's the five and the ten pins, the last two to go down, and it's a way to start. A few of the butterflies off. That close to a double. The conventional 1-3 pocket hit that time for the right-hander. Well, I wonder if he's warmed up yet. He's thrown three balls to complete the two <laughs> frames. Strike and then a spare on the strike. So right out of the chute comes Brian McKinley. And now John Mafio. And John is right through the center, spread eagle. You mentioned Brian comes from Nashua, recently moved from Londonderry. We moved without letting us know, didn't I send know. us a card or anything. No, nothing. Well, you know, it happens when you, when you get married. <laughs> He's a new, newlywed as He's well, right, so yeah, yeah that, we'll have to excuse him. <laughs> Probably blame on his wife. She was the one who was supposed to send you the card. Tell us we moved. <laughs> <laughs> John is in the pocket, but leaves himself the five, the seven, and the eight, and a couple ways. Well, one of his choices might be diminishing here rapidly. He has no choice now but to play the wood out in front. And it I is considerably out in front. Yeah, I'd say you have to go left. That's what he tried to do, but too far left. Eight box for John. So quickly, it's a 13-pin lead for Buxton and McKinley, and it's going to go a little higher than that when Bob Buxton gets his first try up in lane 32. These four bowlers, three of them, as I said, have been with us before. 
Dennis Prusher, which you'll see in just a few minutes, is a newcomer. Bob really lets that ball go out on the lane in front of him when he lets it go. Nine bucks. Bob is from Merrimack, Mass. Lives there with his wife, Bonnie. Bob works at AT&T. Does a lot of his bowling at St. Joseph's in Haverhill. And overall, this is Bob's fourth appearance on Stars and Strikes. Good looking ball in the 1-3 pocket. Leaves himself the 4-8. He had the 10 pin also up there. Just was able to tip that one down. Now he's got a little easier spare leaf. Now he leaves it to the right. And another nine bucks. A couple of nines for Bob Buxton. And now we'll get our first look at Dennis Prusha from Concord. Where does he do his bowling, Duck? <laughs> well, without even looking at the sheet, I would probably guess it's Boutwell's Bowling Center. Uh, great place, great place. <laughs> well, watch out. Almost fell and took out the nine pin as well. Leaves himself just the nine and a couple pieces of wood, trying to direct traffic, have it turn a little bit for him. And oh, playing it left for the spare. Use all of it. <laughs> Dennis and his wife Linda have three children, 16-year-old Chris, 15-year-old Debbie, 13-year-old Stacy. Dennis works in automotive supply. Missing. Tough leave anyway, the 510. Automotive Supply Associates is where Dennis is employed, and he throws up a spare with an eight, followed by a nine, closing that gap to just eight pins. And buried the ball right in the pocket, but left himself the five and the 10. And Brian was on fire, his first two frames with a strike and a spare. This time he's looking at the three, five, six, ten. Yes. And still perfect. Wow. Made that look easy, and it's not an easy shot. Well, just splits the three and the five. Well, misses the head pin this time, but decent break of eight. The one and the seven pins left. 70 half for the team of McKinley and Buxton. Watch out. Went left. He knew it. And 80 through six. And a bad start. And John Mafio in that Brooklyn side pocket. Yeah, he's got a choice here. The wood may carry it, or he can shoot at the 10 pin clean. See what he decides to do. Going right at it. Well, in between. <laughs> <laughs> Played both ways. Matches a spear up in the fifth. Down by 16, they can cut into that lead. He's right in the pocket, make it seven. And difficult lead. Three, five, and nine, piece of wood. He's gonna have to hit high and turn it. Second piece resting against the five pin to the left. Looks pretty good. Mm. Too high. Hope everyone had an enjoyable Christmas last week and uh, and an equally enjoyable New Year's this week. Have big plans for the holiday, please be careful. On and off the roads. Bob Buxton mixing after kind of a 
funny hit. He leaves the 7-10. It's a real light hit. Scrambled eight of them, but loves himself the 7 and the 10, as Doug said. A piece, couple pieces of wood out in front. He's going to have to have that move around a little bit. Not enough. Bob still looking for his first mark. The runner-up team in this match will share $150 in prize money and also receive plaques from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, Massachusetts, as all our bowlers do. The winning team, of course, will move on to face our number three team of Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien next week. Half wish to right for Bob Buxton. The two and uh, three and the nine are out of there. And he follows Ooh. it right up. <laughs> he came very, very close to just chipping that head pin out of there, and then who knows what'll happen. He's gonna try to grab as many as he can now. He'll make it seven. That'll bring up Dennis Prusha for his second go around. Dennis uh had a 669 in the roll off to finish fourth overall. Remember, we take the top 10 bowlers. They enter as individual competitors. We take the top 10 finishers from the roll from the final roll off, and uh, then we pair them up: one with 10, two with nine, three with eight, and so on. And then we add the scores together. And then, uh, however, those scores add up. That's how the seeds are determined. Get a nine box for Dennis. His team is 80 through seven, trailing by 10. Slipping by on the left. Still looking at five. Can gain a few and count. He's opposite a seven frame. He's actually going to lose one in count, so the lead is now 11 for Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley. The finals for this particular roll-off were held at the Meredith Lanes in Meredith, New Hampshire. Oh, Brian, right on the head pin then. Got the head pin and the five pin. Right straight through the middle. Pretty good recovery. Nine box for Brian. Makes it 106 through nine. Final frame, game one. This is one reason why it's so tough to stay warm, tough to stay hot at the line in doubles is because you have to wait a little longer every time you go up there and that extra waiting time can throw off your rhythm a little bit. Sometimes when you're bowling in singles competition, uh, particularly here on this television format, you're only sitting down for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes in between times when you go up. Here you may be sitting for five minutes. Brian's looking at the two and the four, and he's going to be right on it. That's his fourth mark of this game. You see the replay, just perfect, splitting the two and the four. As Doug said, he has the four marks for his team, are all his, 116 and this bonus ball coming. Right in the pocket, and there Making it is. Another one. Five marks, including two strikes for Brian McKinley in game one. He started with one, and he finished with one. And sandwiched three spares in the middle. John Mafio now. Watch out, that Excellent. kicks forward for a strike. John right back in the pocket. Looks like he's going to have an eight pin drop. Then the eight pin goes down and finally the four. The team of Mafia, Mafio and Prusa needs 40 pins in these last two boxes to tie. And they may come close to it if John can convert this spare. Oh, he's off. 
target there with a nine fill on the strike, but they're going to be within striking distance. Lots of time still left. On this one, one game complete. It'll be 126 for the team of Buxton and McKinley, 115 for Prusa and Mafio. The lead is 11 after one, and we'll be back with game two in a minute. Second, Dennis Prusa though, set to get us rolling here in game two. Easy on the criticism, though, because I my <laughs> feelings get hurt very easily. Dan's very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you tell? <laughs> Dennis looking at the 1, 2, 6, oh, 8, great 10. Shot. What a shot. The 1, 2, 6, 8, and 10. He hit it right in the pocket. Watch the ball go down and take out the 6 and the 10. Headpin does the damage on the other two. And it's, the result is a spare. I take it back. He played it on the inside, not on the pocket side. Oh, and unfortunately, he punches out for a 3 fill. Works out of it for a seven. Oops, and I push in six on the computer. You can't trust these computers. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers are a little chilly this morning. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I mentioned in our audience today, too, are Bob and Phyllis, I believe it's Baloo, and they're celebrating their 43rd anniversary right here. That's great. Came up and spoke to us before the show began. Yeah, and from Reading, Massachusetts. That's terrific. Sitting right in the front row. It's a gentleman to your far right, and his wife is on the other side of him. You can't quite see her. There she is in the red. Spare nice for Bob Buxton. That's his first mark. That's a great shot, too, because he had to negotiate around that front piece of wood. Six marks for the team already. Oh, and enough. another punch out on a fill. This will be a four. Well, it's two more than he thought he was going to get. <laughs> he had the half whister at one time, and then a couple pins came back, knocked the seven pin down, and the eight. Plus, he has a piece of wood back there. I don't know if it's going to be much of a factor, but. Kind of hidden behind all those pins standing. Just missed the head pin to the left. We have received one letter from Seabrook, New Hampshire. We'll get to it when Bob finishes his box from Calvin Randall. And Calvin writes to us about a uh, question about the Brooklyn side. And um, the way he heard it was that uh, there was a match being played where Brooklyn was on the left side of the of the alley, he says, hence the Brooklyn side um, was the one-two pocket. And uh, he asked about the left-hander throwing the ball if the uh, if the one-three would be considered the Brooklyn side. Uh, both Doug and I agree. We have heard it referred to when the left-hander is up there, the one-three being the Brooklyn side. Now, whether we're just uh, assuming because it's the left-hander versus the right-hander would be the opposite side, I don't know. I, I really haven't... Uh, haven't heard the term or where it originated from. Well, I can tell you that uh, in the official Candlepin Bowling Rules and Regulations booklet published by the ICBA, the phrase Brooklyn side is not listed, which kind of surprises me. Hmm. Ideally, if you're a right-hander, you want to put the ball in the 1-3 pocket. Left-hander, you want to put it in the 1-2 pocket. That way the ball's cutting through the pins. And if you cross over, we always refer to, to it as the Brooklyn side. And I admit that the right-hander, the 1-2, is more the accepted Brooklyn side. But there are more right-handers than left-handers. That's, that's probably the that's biggest true. reason for that. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny because a lot of these terms uh, in bowling, as in so many sports, there are great legends and lore that go with them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's like the... the many different stories you read regarding the term half Worcester and uh, and I've, I've heard a couple of different ones on on Brooklyn side uh, 
one being that, you know, as you approach New York City from the north, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn is on the left side, so Brooklyn side, obviously. But it's interesting. I, this this will probably generate some more mail, I would imagine, I, which I'm is good sure. because every time we get a letter like this, we always hear all the different stories, which is good. So if you have a, uh, a thought on that, <laughs> or if you happen to be from Brooklyn, <laughs> drop us a line. But uh, Calvin, we, uh, Calvin Randall, we thank you for your letter. Oh boy, triangle in the right hand corner, six, nine, ten, it went right through the middle. Picked out just the six pin. In fact, I was in Brooklyn just a couple of weeks ago. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, people from Brooklyn. I was only kidding. <laughs> only kidding. I'm sure it's a very nice place. I don't think I've ever been to Brooklyn. Brian got a nice break there as the seven pin kicked out for him, and he converts it. Doesn't miss too many spare leaves today. We will take a timeout. The team of Buxton and McKinley with a markup in the fourth, and they have the lead. And we'll return in a minute. Dennis Prusha. Back up in the second game, fifth box. See Dennis's roll-off score. The winning roll-off score, by the way, was Dan Broder's 686. And on the strength of that, uh, Dan is a member of the number one seeded team, paired up with Peter Pereira, who was the 10th place finisher. Dennis works it out for a 10 box. Dennis moves lane 31 for the sixth frame. Game number two. Off target to the left. And this time straight through the middle. So he's leaving himself the 3-6. Trying to convert these two for the 10 box. The team needs some marks. Now Bob Buxton steps in, working on the spare left by his partner, Brian McKinley. Already leading by 14, so he can push that lead up into the three mark territory to catch him. And he does just that with a seven fill. Just tap the five pin a little bit, but the wood should assist this shot. Just hope the wood is in deep enough to carry the eight pin. Yes. yes, it is. Good crowd on hand for this first of our four week series on Stars and Strikes Doubles. They're enjoying the action. We hope you are too. Very big crowd. These people here you see are legitimate people to be here. The people that you can't oh. see on camera, which is a strike on spare for Bob Bucks to make it three in a row. Let's take a look at that. Brooklyn side. <laughs> Drips out the nine pin. Yeah, the people you can't see on camera are supposed to be at work. <laughs> <laughs> but we've taken all their names. That's right. <laughs> and we're not opposed to taking a bribe to keep their name off the show, so. It's Chris, oh, we just, I gotta pay all the Christmas bills now, so. <laughs> John Mafio right through the middle. So all of a sudden, the team of Buxton and McKinley have pushed that lead to 31 and threatened to go higher. Well, John Mafio will work over to lane 31 for this next box, regardless of what happens to John in this match. Uh, he's going to be with us next week on the singles show, which happens to be in the mixed doubles format during this four-week stretch. John is going to be partnered with Louise Hamilton, and they will face uh, Dennis Shute and Dottie Larrick, who knocked off Joe Rollins and Tony Austin just prior to this show starting. So regardless of what happens today, you're going to see John again next week. And he's right on the 10-pin. Whoops, for a spare, and I, well, I'm, well, I'm having a tough time this morning. There we go. Now Brian McKinley working on a strike in the sixth. Come on. 
Kind of a light hit, and the 7-10 remain. Well, he could go right down the middle with those two pieces of wood, or he could snap the one in front of the 10 pin, which I think maybe is the better of the two. Just missed it. He may still catch it. You could tell by the body angle she was shooting for that piece of wood out in front and just missed clipping it on the left. 10 bucks. Mentioned Brian is a newlywed, his wife Debbie. They live in Nashua now, and uh, Brian McKinley works as an assistant store manager for Purity, Su Purity Supermarkets. Just off target that time. Well, we've seen this leave converted once today. Yes, Dennis Spusha. In fact, that's one of the two marks they have in this game, was very first box. And just like that, <laughs> almost a carbon copy of the way Dennis played it on the inside. Maybe that isn't such a tough shot. <laughs> he had the benefit of a, another piece of wood in front of the 6-10, but still a great shot. And here is Dennis Prusha working oh, on the spare a with a one. strike. That's what they need. Boy, the team really needed that. Dennis ball, it's more or less straight, but it does back up a little bit and then you break from left to right. Oh, and how about this, it? That close to a double. Wow. Well, this is what they need because they have yet until just then, they had not been able to put marks back to back. Gotta watch out, this is a second piece of wood in the back. Ooh, <laughs> blew up and over the front piece. So Dennis will stay up there and fill that mark. They're at 107 through nine, 117th in the 10th, plus the bonus ball. I'm sure he'd love to keep the pattern going and fire another strike in here on this spare. Let's see. Looks pretty good. Oh, that close to a triple strike, unbelievable. 126, two string total, 241, and a big finish for the team of Prusa and Mafio as they get 59 pins in the last three boxes. So depending on what Bob Buxton does on this mark, match could stay pretty even. Ooh, well that won't help. Clears out the three, six, and ten. Two, four, and seven left. Joe Paglia is our lob line judge here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and a newcomer, Dick Bailey, working the big scoreboard here to keep the bowlers and our spectators informed. And Dick doing a fine job over there behind the scenes. The toughest part about that job is you end up with blue hands. <laughs> yeah, I know. At the end of the day. <laughs> Does he know that that never comes off. <laughs> <laughs> One, seven, ten, and also the four pin in there. A couple pieces of wood. One in between the one and the four, another one in front of the four and seven. Now, the second piece is rolling right directly behind the head pin. Now that might cost him the shot because it might deaden the head pin right where it sits. It did. Yep. Well, this match is still going to be pretty tight. In spite of that mid-string explosion by the team of Buxton and McKinley, uh, Prusa and Mafio were able to bounce back at the end of the game. And Buxton and McKinley add just two pins to their lead here in game two. So the difference, 254 to 241. A 13-pin lead for Buxton and McKinley, and we've got game three coming right up. Well, let's find out if a 13-pin advantage is, or which it's good luck for, which team. <laughs> that's what the lead is for Brian Buxton, uh, Brian McKinley and Bob Buxton. 254-241. Get a look over Brian's right shoulder as he delivers on lane 32, and he's got some work to do. Spread Eagle plus the eight pin in the back. Oh, how Whoa. about it? How about it? How about there it? You got it! Oh. oh, we'll have another look at that one. You don't what see a, that one very often. What a great shot. You wondered if the three, uh, two pin was eventually going to go or not. Came from behind and just enough to tip it over. Great shot. And there's where that extra pin in the back comes into play because it bounced off the eight pin to give him the momentum coming back. And oh, boy, does he oh. cash in on it. Wow. Put a star next to that one for Brian McKinley. Turning a semi-disaster in 
to something very, very positive for the team. And Dennis Prusha got a cluster of six. One, two, four, seven, the five, the eight. And no, oh, wow. everything but the seven. This match comes down to one box. You'd have to put a circle around that first box of this third game for Brian McKinley. Already the team of Buxton and McKinley with 12 marks, including four strikes. Dennis Prusha would love to get something on the board here, and he leaves the five pin. Boy, that's a lot of nine pin drops he's had in the last four or five boxes the five pin a couple pieces of wood in front uh oh he's gone left well <laughs> got away with it yeah, double pieces I guess he was pretty safe well, let's see if Bob can keep the string alive here two marks in a row and again he hits the head pin but he goes straight through the middle Oh, he was paying close attention to his partner. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> the difference in making that one and not making it was probably the pin in the back. Didn't give him enough momentum for the pin coming forward for the three, uh, two pin. Great effort, though. 49 through three. Right in the oh, pocket. Boy. One box too late for Bob's liking. No doubt about that one. Didn't take long for those 10 pins that could be cleared out of there. Well, it's a big ball for John Mafia working on a spare. Well, makeable spare, the two and the seven, but he's got help in between. And that help is coming up to nestle against the two pin, which he makes it even a little easier. He wants to be on the two pin. He actually could miss it to the right and snap the wood and still make it. I'm sure he's thinking right on the two pin. Yep. Two in a row for the team. Just so when you think one of the teams is going to pull out to kind of a comfortable lead, the other team comes back. Well, this is off target. That hurt because he's opposite of strike in this box. right back in that break. close. Wow. The wood did not help that time, I don't think. Probably stood it back up. Yep. I think, I think you're so right. Settled it down a little bit. Uh, we will take a break. The team of Buxton and McKinley still rolling up the marks, and they have the lead with six frames to go. Don't go away. Brian McKinley. Working on a strike left by his partner, Bob Buxton, in the fourth. Leading by 22, plus these two balls. Three, six, ten, with the eight pin. Piece of wood in front of the three and the six, and also behind, which should help him with the eight pin. He's got to clip the three pin. Yes. Something like that. Got the wood and the three pin, the best of two worlds there. Boy, they're going to have an outstanding triple here if they keep things going the way they are right now. That's the 14th mark for the team and another big eight fill. Yes. Chops it over for the spare. Almost was too full on the five <laughs> pin, but just nestled against the eight pin, slid it over, and it's the third mark in a row. Dennis and John have just had a few too many of those. Well, Dennis is going to try to cut it over. He near, very nearly converts that spare. 
Now it's, it's crunch time right now for the team of Prusa and Mafia. Really going to have to put a mark here and almost mark out. 40 pin lead. The other team already has a mark in the sixth. Won't be easy. Gives it a try. Hey, he gets it. it. Nice, nice shot. shot. Had to get the wood moving. He cleared out three of them fast. Then it was just a matter of time if he can get some help on the 10 pin, which he does, and keeps their hopes alive. Bob Buxton now for his final two. He's working on a spare. Oh yeah, boy. just like that. That's four marks in a row for the team. They're not looking back now. That's six marks in seven boxes this game for the team of Buxton and McKinley. It was Brian early and then, well actually Brian has never let up and then Bob has now found his game. And he's starting to throw some marks up. Deadly combination when both team members can get going. The result is going to be a fine, as Doug said, triple. Nope. Not quite on the spare that time. But they've got a certain 150 game, it appears. Yeah, already at 135. They get 136. That'll be well over 400, undoubtedly. Already at 390. Well. I'm sure John Mafia was thinking, I got a spare, I need a strike. I think I have to follow up with another one. Slight, let's see what happens. Well, if he marks here and gets another mark in the eighth. Well, well, watch watch out. out. He's got it. He's got it is right. Ball stayed there. <laughs> John's got a little smile on his face. A little bit of the English on that ball. <laughs> right back on the plate and wow. <laughs> Can't seem to throw the strikes like the team of Buxton and McKinley are doing. And missing on the spare opportunity. That'll give Brian McKinley an opportunity to close this out with his final two. John Mafio finishes his efforts for the day. Let's take another look at that. Just a little too high in the wood. He had to come high, but he capped the wood and sent the ball in the other direction. And Brian McKinley, who got this whole thing started with strike spare the first time he stepped up to start the match. Actually, that spare really, uh, in the first frame, I think, ignited the team. And then when he threw the strike on top of it, it's Katie bar the door. Eight box this time, 144 through nine. Well, puts a nine box up, it's over even with all strikes. At 4.04 right now. The one, the two, seven and eight left for Brian. Looking ahead, of course, this three-string total doesn't mean as much as the one our winning team gets three weeks from today, but still an outstanding 154 and a 408 for the team of Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley. But the three teams that have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks doubles tournament of champions, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray with a 448, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn with a 412. Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre with a 373.
107 for Dennis, so 112, final frame. Next week's challengers, of course, will be Phil Clough from Warren, Massachusetts, and Tom O'Brien from Natick, Massachusetts. Both bowls have been with us before. Tom quite a few times. I think Tom was excited about that pairing because he figured Phil could just come in from Western Mass and pick him up on the way and <laughs> just come right up here. <laughs> yeah, but he had to start. We taped on Tuesday. I think he started on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> 122 for the team of Prusa and Mafio. A three-string total of 363. Not enough on this day to beat an outstanding effort by Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley. They will move on with their 408, and we'll be back to talk to both teams in a minute. And welcome back to Stars and Strikes Doubles. What a terrific uh, exhibition we saw put on by Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley with that outstanding 408. They will move on and uh, face another challenge next week in our second of the four-week series, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But first of all, how about a hand for our runners-up, John Mafio and Dennis Prusha. Come on up, guys. We have uh, checks for both of you here, sharing uh, $150 fifth place prize money, and uh, our congratulations as always. Uh, Dennis, we'll start with you. I know up, oh, he's, he's throwing away the money already. He doesn't need it, so he's going to throw it away. I know you, you tried for many years to, uh, to come here, and uh, we're glad you finally made it. Uh, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, it would have been better if we got the W, yeah, yeah. but yeah, good time. It's, uh, this, I think, for, for what most people say is when they finally get over the hump, get here the first time, that makes it all a lot easier. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, you guys, uh, you guys made some shots today, but just not, not as many as uh, your opponents, I guess. Yeah, Brian and Bob bowled real excellent, and we didn't bring any luck with us. But well, I'll be back again, though. That's right. You're coming back just next week. Yeah, next week you're going to be back here uh, for mixed doubles, so we're, we're going to get tired of seeing you around here. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Congratulations, and hope to see you again soon, Dennis. All right? And... Uh, Again, uh, Dennis Prusha's first time here. He told me before the show he's been trying for eight years to make it. He finally got here, and uh, we hope to see him again real soon. All right, let's have a, another round of applause for our winners, Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley. A 408. Just uh, well, 400 is good any time for three, but in doubles uh, it's even more impressive. Uh, turn toward the camera, guys, so we can see. And uh, well, you, you started this thing right. You get started with a strike spare, and it just went on from there. Yeah. Well, I wasn't nervous this time, so it made it a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> just can't talk to me while the camera's not rolling. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, plus, you knew you had a good partner too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well. We battled before. It was a little fun bowling with them this time. Instead. That's right. We, we never mentioned that during the show, but you guys bowled against each other in singles here in February. This must have been a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, it's better bowling with Brian than against him. <laughs> well, see, he started quickly, and then uh, you were able to pick it up in the middle and, and carry it through the end. Yeah, I had a tough time getting started there. Uh, Brian was carrying me, and then uh, I started throwing a couple of marks to second string, and I thought we had him put away until uh, Dennis came through in the end of that second string with a few big marks. But uh, that's what makes bowling so fun. Well, you got one in the bank now, and uh, next week you'll be looking at Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. Sounds like a pretty good combination to me, yeah. so uh, we'll tough. be looking forward to it. They'll be tough. But All right. We'll be here. All right. A 408, guys. Congratulations. An outstanding triple, and we'll see you again next week. And uh, let's uh, get a look at the ladder now to see exactly where we are in this mixed doubles series, or rather in this doubles series. Mixed doubles is at noon. Doubles is at 1. And uh, there it is. We've got Buxton and McKinley from that number 5 spot. Moving up now, they will face Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien, uh, our Massachusetts connection, uh, next week. And both of those guys have been here before, and uh, on paper, that seems like a terrific match. Yeah, if you remember Phil Clough's uh, first appearance with us, uh, I think he had five or six marks the first game and uh, bowled extremely well. And, of course, uh, Tom O'Brien has been with us a number of times and bowled real well, too. So, yeah, and probably take another 400. That's a terrific story. Uh, Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley, back in February, they, they bowled against uh, each other on the single show, and uh, it was a terrific match, 4-12 to 4-10, and they were talking about that prior to the show, and uh, boy, they, they kept it going. They, they would have had 400s individually had, been, had they been bowling the way they did today. Absolutely, and they just bowled well as a team, and the uh, difference was the strikes that they threw, and, uh, and uh, Dennis and um, uh, Mr. Mafio there, who's been with us every other week, uh, <laughs> just couldn't seem to buy the strike at the key time. All right, we hope you join us uh, next Sunday at 12 noon, of course. We're in the middle of our mixed doubles series there, and then at 1 o'clock next week, we're back here on Stars and Strikes doubles as Bob Buxton and Brian McKinley try and make it two in a row over Phil Clough and Tom O'Brien. Until then, have a safe and happy new year, everybody, from all of us at TV50, from my partner Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown. Bye-bye, everybody.